te tutu ni o ki tātou no te turanga o te aorangi, ki ako no tātou i te tātou aorangi, e ara rotu i te moana, a rotu i te tai. Te kite ni tātou i te manamana tātou tau i a ngārewa, te iti nei tika, i rotu i te moana, te mate nei te akau, e iti i tuatau, ka reo tātou tika anga, I te rawe ako o tuanga, i te tae o anga anga te kariro mai, e tamana mana tā i tō tātou moana. Companies interested in exploring the Cook Islands for seabed minerals met today with the government agencies and NGOs. There could be an early sitting of Parliament next year as the government tries to pass the Seabed Minerals Bill. A Cook Islands Marine scientific team departed Rotonga this morning on the local vessel Greta for a two-week survey of the manganese nodules in the Cook Islands exclusive economic zone. Ocean Minerals Limited has acquired a reserve area and recently received a research permit to conduct some sampling in the area. The Seabed Minerals Authority officially launched the opening of licenses to explore the polymetallic minerals in the Cook Islands EEZ. It is my great pleasure as the Minister for Seabed Minerals to open the licensing process for exploration licensing in our Cook Islands waters. The Cook Island Seabed Minerals Authority is the lead agency tasked with regulating seabed minerals activity that falls under the jurisdiction of the Cook Islands. The authority was established back in 2013. Currently we have released the draft um, seabed minerals mining regulations and they're currently out for comment. Um, the closing period for comments will be January of 2021. The intent or the goal of exploration is to gain more data, therefore gain more information on the deep sea environment, what's out there, um, what can we learn about what's out there and of course um, if we were to proceed with I guess the recovery phase which would be the next phase after exploration, um, can this be done in an environmentally and socially acceptable way. This park that we established, it took about seven years um, to go through consultations with the communities, find out what they thought about it, um, negotiate between government departments and between government departments and NGOs um, and traditional leaders, what the marine protected area should look like. And finally, everybody came up with this um, multiple use marine park where there'd be marine spatial planning. Um, so that's areas where you can set aside for conservation and areas where you can sustainably harvest resources. Part of my job was to help the government to find ways to mine in a way that's not going to impact the marine protected area we'd just established. That's Marae Moana. Aside from a few individuals inside government, most of the world, the rest of the world, thinks how can you possibly mine inside a marine protected area and still call it a marine protected area. I understand there is exploration, I think it's just a matter of time of uh when does it transform from exploration to exploitation? I think it's too soon, to be honest. I think there's still so much that isn't known and we even, as a country, haven't got, you know, that the environmental regulations are still in their draft form for seabed minerals activities. So these companies who are putting in bids don't even know what our regulations are going to be in their final form yet. Um, and don't know if they can adhere to our regulations. So I think that's that's one of the ways we're moving too fast. We should really have got all our regulations in place before opening up for exploration. A lot of people are concerned about how fast it's going. Um, and especially as a young one, it's kind of like, 
I'm still gonna be here like 20, 30, 40 years. What's it gonna be like then? Like we expect there to be more research before any actual action is happening. So with the exploration um, licenses being launched, we hope that that exploration process um, isn't just exploration, yet happy, straight bang into the mining. The Marae Moana, which is our marine park, which is the whole of the Cook Islands exclusive economic zone, um, we haven't finished the marine spatial planning for that yet, so I think that's that's something that really should be done before exploration, if, before we even look at licensing exploratory um, activities. It, because it takes a long time to gather information about the biodiversity of the deep ocean, really it takes years to study species and their biology and uh, to determine what species are there that could um, be useful to us in some other way, such as in um, helping us to find cures for cancer or um, cures for diabetes or um, designing some sort of technology, you know, we can learn all of these things from the life that lives in the deep ocean. I'd expect it to be a long time, even just doing my work, which are, you know, similar fields have taken a lot of time to do what I'm doing. And so even just the planning stage can take a long time. And then you've got the field work itself, uh, which can take a long time. And then you've got to analyse it, which can take a long time. The scientists have warned us that um, the impacts of seabed mining will be irreversible. Um, and so with information like that, we really have to ask ourselves the question, are we going to be OK with not being able to undo these impacts? Are we really OK with that? Feeling empowered to be able to speak out, um, be, to be able to ask questions, because we have, I think, culturally we have, we have such a respect for authority, which is, you know, is, is a good thing. But at the same time, people, we need to remember, because I do this too. We need to remember that actually our MPs and our people in government are people that we have put there. They are public servants, literally. The definition of that is to serve the public. It might seem like you're speaking out against authority, you're speaking out against your government, which isn't the case. I think it's very healthy to be able to ask questions, have them answered. I think people just need to ask themselves um, if they've ever been in a situation where uh, they decided that they wouldn't say anything publicly because they were concerned about how that would affect their job. Uh, and if the answer is yes, um, then it means that our laws aren't sufficient to protect our free speech in the country. We call on Pacific leaders to join the growing rank of governments, scientific authorities, civil society, and global leaders and indigenous groups all over the world, opposing the rush to mine the ocean floor, and in doing so, destroy our common heritage. I think um, COVID-19 has clearly established within the Cook Islands the need to consider other opportunities where income can be generated. But in saying that, I think it's really, really important that we take heed and be cautious about how we manage seabed minerals mining and what does that mean for the community and for the longer term sustainability of our lagoons and um, our marine environment. I'm not against mining. I'm not against uh, us making use of these, uh, you know, basically gift uh, from nature, from God for us. 
But I think is there's an obligation for us not to sleep walk into this sort of thing. There is a real danger we're going to be eaten alive by top-notch negotiators. I don't think it'll do anything much at all. It'll do a lot for other countries, but not for us. The, the way the, the government have been trying to um, bring in new ideas and, and I think the new ideas are good to a certain extent, but not all the time. Yahoo e me pūpinga ki a ki a tuku o tūtātou i te anga-anga, ki a roa tu te tūtātou, e rāwenga no te akatapa pa mita ki anga i a tātou, e te akamatutu anga i tātātou o tamariki, ki a riro mai, nā rātou e rawe i te anga-anga. So we have been told as a nation that there's economic benefits, there's economic gains coming from such an industry like seabed mining. But I guess there's lots of questions um, and uncertainties around how this financial gain will be managed and how much of that money will actually trickle down to the people. So until we can get some sort of confirmation, uh, confirmation or guarantee that there really is some economic benefits around this, um, it's really something we need um, to be more alert about. Keep in mind, these people that we're going to give the rights to to, to dig that thing, to, to harvest it, they are billionaires and billionaires, and they have an army. They have the army to back them up to make their decisions. Now, we have to be careful. We have to, now we have the mana to hold them. Once they get in, we can't stop them. We can't say, oh, that's not what was agreed. Too late, they're in the door. Too late. But the problem is you make a mistake and you lost it all. You know, you're not going to get those minerals replaced. Once it's gone, it's gone. So we, you have one go at this, you've got to get it right at the beginning. We need to prepare our people how to manage, uh, you know, how to manage this benefit. Yeah, we know our weakness, we're terrible with money. So let's change that around. Let's have our people be good with money. Train them all so that when we get this benefit, we know how to handle it. I think all we're going to get is money that melts. Money doesn't last. If we are going to do it, and that's a big like, if we are, we should take as much care and do as much research as possible. Find out, you know, do the research first and then find out that everything's great, rather than just jumping into it and then finding out that everything's so wrong. Let's wait another 20 years. Let's do this right. Let's do this right. I can't see us getting the best out of this sector if we as we the violence people are not as involved in it as we can be and we're not getting the best out of it. No one knows that much information about seabed mining in general and what that looks like for the islands. You have to actually get people to explain it to you, you have to go to things and ask questions. And for an average Cook Islander who's busy or maybe doesn't actually have that much interest and is doing other things, they're not going to have the time to go and find this out. And they should. It should be kind of like, it should be like politics, it should be like daily news. If this is a sector that we are going to consider going into, or we are considering going into and we're trying to move ahead with, every member of the Islands community needs to be aware of it. I know a little of the seabed mining, but I understand from my Bible point of view, I should not be disturbing the ocean floor. Some of our people to a degree are informed, but when we come down to the community level, there's not really uh, understanding, I'd say. Uh, people know what seabed mining is, but they don't understand how it works and uh, what the uh, problems of it are. The people want to know more. They don't just want it to happen, they want more information before anything is actually happening. These resources don't belong to one person, they belong to all of us, and we should all have a say, an opinion, and just 
we should all be informed and aware and be made aware of what this process actually means for us. I think the rationale behind the, the moratorium, which is being called for a minimum 10 year moratorium, the rationale is that there's not enough um, scientific information on what the impacts are going to be, the extent of the impacts, their likelihood. We don't know enough about the deep sea in general to be able to, to say what the impacts are going to be. I understand there's like a 10 year moratorium going on. Um, I don't know if that's long enough, but I don't know. Uh, but then also when you get that information being transparent about it, eh? Um, I think transparency is key, uh, rather than just showing the um, what the people need to see or want. Oh, well, want to see. In order to have the information to make management decisions, a 10-year moratorium is the minimum that you would need to um, to learn about the the deep ocean and adequately protect the environment from uh, mining. There's a lot of ifs, I know this sounds all very uncertain, um, but that's the nature of, of deep sea mining right now. Everything is so uncertain, there's really, the technology is very uncertain, the impacts are uncertain, both social and environmental. So much uncertainty and that's really the driving force behind asking for more time.